Formula One is a very unique sport. From the outside, it almost seems like an individual sport like tennis or boxing, with 20 drivers driving on the track going for first place. But in reality, Formula One is a massive team sport. Yes, there are 20 drivers on track driving around, but behind the scenes there are 300 to 1,200 employees per team working behind the scenes. So if we take an average of all the Formula One team members, this means there are over 7,000 people working at Formula One teams. And that's only at the teams. There are also thousands of people working for F1 media companies, working as freelancers, working for a circuit, and of course, working for Formula One. So if you're eager to work in Formula One or just wanna see what's going on, then this video is perfect for you. Basically, what I'll be doing is firstly breaking down the different jobs and roles that you can do within Formula One, and then showing you how to best position yourself to then get hired by those companies. So if you wanna work in Formula One, then keep watching. Now, firstly, I just wanna clear up, you do not need to be an engineer in order to get a job in Formula One. The way Formula One is televised and because of Drive to Survive, we get the impression that you need to be a mechanic or an engineer just to work in Formula One. But there are hundreds of jobs away from this that don't involve such specialized things, such as marketing, finance, IT, personal training. Basically, if you've got a passion, there is a job for it in Formula One. However, if you are looking to be an engineer, then obviously Formula One is the perfect place to be because it is really the pinnacle of engineering worldwide. Now, I'm sure there's a very broad range of people watching this video that are at different stages of organizing their Formula One career. Some of you have completely no idea what you want to do, which is completely fair. Some have a vague idea of the general area, but not exactly an exact role. And some of you are absolutely certain of what you want to do, but aren't quite sure how to do it. Whoever you are, this video is for you. Okay, so for this next section, I'm gonna outline the different areas and jobs you can do in Formula One that are pretty commonplace. But if you're already dead set on exactly what you want to do, then probably skip to the section in this video where I speak about how to position yourself to get that dream job. Now, I'm just gonna give a quick disclaimer. Obviously, I'm not gonna go through every single detail of every job in Formula One, because that'll be a very long and very dull video. But if you do have any questions about a specific role, then make sure to comment in the section down below or contact my Instagram shown somewhere here. Right, so the way Formula One jobs are categorized is two ways. You either have competitive jobs or non-competitive jobs. Now, competitive jobs are basically working for a team or driver competing to be better in the sport. Whereas non-competitive jobs kind of see the sport from the outside and can't actually have an effect on the result of a race or qualifying session. Right, well, let's jump straight into the deep end and look at Formula One teams. Now again, jobs in Formula One teams are categorized in two ways. You either have technical roles or business roles. Right, well, we'll firstly start with the technical side. Now, these jobs are the ones that build the car, maintain the car, and basically maintain any technology that's used by the team. And when breaking down the technical side of the business, there are seven main areas that you can get into. There's engineers, mechanics, technicians, machinists, aerodynamicists, designers, and IT specialists. Now, engineers cover a wide range from optimizing the chassis and power units back at the factory or managing race data and deciding strategies trackside. Mechanics, however, are purely focused on building and repairing the car throughout the year, keeping them working at an optimal performance. Technicians are basically the jack of all trades, assisting in anything from moving shipping containers to repairing the tires, basically carrying out various functional jobs. Machinists, whereas, build and construct the physical components that are put on the car using complex CNC machines. Aerodynamicists are, unsurprisingly, working on the aerodynamic design of the car, working heavily on CAD softwares and wind tunnels. Basically, if you love maths, this is perfect for you. Designers, whereas, work on designing the components such as bolts that is then made by the machinists and placed on the car by the mechanics. And finally, IT specialists are focused on maintaining the hardware, so computers and servers, and software like communication networks or security systems that allow the teams to function effectively. And also on the other side of the team, you have the business roles. Now, these are the ones that make sure everything behind the scenes in a Formula One team is ticking effectively. 
And there are six main areas of business operations that you can get into. There's the marketing, operations, finance, hospitality, human relations, and legal. Marketing involves creating promotional materials and projects in order to get sponsors as well as the majority of media roles in the team. Whereas operations concerns the logistical organizing in terms of transport of team members and motorhomes to races, as well as managing supply chains for various components and materials. Finance basically manages everything money, so this keeps business spending forecasting and keeping track of company accounts, something Red Bull seem to struggle to do. Hospitality involves managing any guests that are attending the races in the team hospitality area, such as giving tours, managing the catering and guest experience. Human relations is essentially the hiring and firing of staff, as well as developing a pretty good team culture. And finally, legal basically handles legal problems such as team disputes and deal negotiations, but sometimes this can be done by a third party. Now, as well as the teams, you can work for the actual drivers. Now, this is quite a hard job to get because you do need a lot of time to build contacts in the sport to get that close to a Formula One driver. And this is why usually people that work for drivers are either family members or ex-drivers themselves. But if it's something you're looking to get into, there are two main jobs you can go for, either a driver manager or a personal trainer. Driver managers essentially manage legal, financial and promotional aspects of the driver, managing their contract negotiations and media appearances, etc, etc. Personal trainers specialise in the physical and mental well-being of the drivers, making sure they are performing at the highest possible level for the entire season. Now obviously, working for a team or driver in a competitive environment is the most common route, but there are hundreds of jobs in a non-competitive environment where you basically work looking into the sport. Now the most common route to go down in this sense is through a media company. I'm talking Sky Sports, Autosport, WTF1, you get the idea. And within these media companies, there are four main common areas where people go into work. And these are journalists, reporters, cameramen, and post-production. Journalists are experts that are skilled at writing and researching that create articles, videos or podcasts and contribute an opinion towards a certain topic, such as current affairs, technical aspects or business. Reporters, meanwhile, are the faces you see on TV talking about various topics to do with Formula One. I'm talking about the Will Buxtons, Simon Lazenby's, Ted Kravitz, etc, etc. Also in many cases, journalists are also reporters, like Lawrence Barreto for example. Cameramen meanwhile are pretty self-explanatory, they basically operate the cameras during filming for a certain video or project, and then post-production includes roles such as video editors and audio engineers that put it all together to create a piece of content. So after all those jobs and careers I listed, I'd assume you have some idea of what you want to get into. And if that's you, then keep watching because I'm going to show you how to position yourself best to get hired by that company. Because sorry to disappoint, but Formula 1 is a ridiculously competitive job market. So you need to do everything you can to stand out from the crowd. So firstly, I'm sure the perception is that you need to be the smartest 1% in the world to work in Formula 1. And in all honesty, that's true in some cases, but certainly not all of them. The qualifications you need to apply for the different roles depends on how specialised or unspecialised they are. Basically, how much you need to learn in order to be hired for the job. So with this being said, I've put together a little list of university degrees that are either required or highly recommended in order to pursue that role. Firstly, you've got Automotive or Mechanical Engineering, Business or Management, Computer Science or Information Technology, and Sports Science and Psychology if you want to be a personal trainer. But doing a university degree isn't even enough. What Formula 1 teams want to see is evidence that you're passionate about motorsport and a bit of experience. And for those at university, I couldn't recommend this more. It's called Formula Student, and it's basically a university racing team that builds the car and manages the business side of things, and then goes and races against other universities. Now, I made a video specifically on Formula Student a few months ago, so please make sure to check that out, because it is something you should definitely get involved with. Another thing for those going to university that I couldn't recommend more is finding a placement in your course. Now, a placement course is basically a four-year course where the first two years are studying, the third year is then working in a real job, 
and then the fourth year is finishing your studies at the university. And so when you come out of university looking for a job, you already have a full year of experience, which is a lot in terms of other applicants that maybe only did a three-year university course. Now, the real trick is to try and get a placement within motorsport, which is something I'm actually trying to do right now. But the other thing that you need to get 100% right is your attitude. Countless times, teams won't hire someone purely because they don't have the right attitude. And Toto Wolf put it perfectly. He said he would rather have a hole in the team than an asshole. So what kind of attitude do you need? Well, you need to be extremely driven and dedicated, obviously very passionate, but you need to also show that you like to learn and develop new skills. But most importantly, you need to stand out of the crowd by demonstrating your passion for Formula One. And this can be either through a hobby or an entrepreneurial activity, like learning a new skill or starting a YouTube channel. Right, so basically that's all I can say to help you. But I also have some advice from those who have either worked in Formula One or currently work in Formula One now. I put out a tweet basically asking if these guys could help by having a little piece of advice for you going forward. And well, I got a few responses. Right, so first up, I've got a man called Sean Kelly, who is the F1 statistician for all the main broadcasters. And he said, get in people's faces and be clear what you want to do. My career started with me cold calling TV networks and pitching why they should hire me and what I could do. Mostly said no initially, but many called me back in the years that followed because they never knew I existed. Then we have a man called Charles Bradley, who is the editor-in-chief at motorsport.com. And he said, I'd recommend this. Think like a racing team. They're all chasing an advantage over their rival, so work out whatever edge you can bring them. That goes for every single department. Ron Dennis would even obsess about the catering, for example. Next up, we've got a man called Blake Hinsey, who's the ex-Red Bull performance engineer who now actually does YouTube. He said, show initiative. Most people on the outside don't have the experience. You'll learn on the job. Employers want to see that you can learn quickly on your feet and get along with a group of people. For almost every job you could do, you can start learning right now. Current Alpine Aero Surface designer Mark Lane said, I'm passionate about my work. It's what I would do as a hobby. Be humble, work hard, and keep your head down. I entered F1 as a CAD and design engineer on a short-term contract, and I was invited to stay. And then finally, I've actually got a fellow YouTuber you might have heard of called FP1 Will, who got very close to getting a job at Racing Point. And he said, having got to the final 10 for a role at Racing Point, using LinkedIn is super, super useful. I just added as many people currently working for Formula One teams, regardless of role, and asked them for specific advice and I was surprised by how many responses I got. So guys, that is my complete and comprehensive guide to getting a job in Formula One, and I really hope I've helped you out. But if you still have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave a comment down below or contact me on my Twitter, at The Racing Pilot, or my personal Instagram, at The Racing Luke. Thanks for watching, I really hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, make sure to like, subscribe, and smash that notification bell to be reminded of any new videos.